My pilot project for women's health research at Yale was about how sex differences uh, play in together with tobacco use and also with depression. People who smoke tobacco have a much higher incidence of depression than people who are non-smokers. And that relationship between smoking and depression is one that uh, has puzzled us and one that we're um, concerned contributes to the ongoing smoking and the inability to quit that's different between men and women. Women have a harder time quitting smoking and also have a much higher, about double the incidence of depression uh, as men. So our project was to look at the role of nicotine in depression-like behavior in um, a basic science model, and also to determine what the sex differences were in those interactions, and to identify whether this was a genetic difference or something that was environmental. What we found is that there is an interaction between uh, the genes that are important for, uh, for depression-like behavior that are influenced by tobacco, the nicotine in tobacco, and we also found that the sex differences interacted with those genes. The most important finding that we had in our pilot project was that there were sex differences in these behaviors. And people hadn't been looking at that, and, and the interaction between those sex differences and uh, in particular, the genes that are related to depression-like behavior and the genes that are important for tobacco use had really not been uh, established. So that we really only began to, to look at that with the pilot project. One of the things that the initial pilot money from uh, women's health research at Yale did for our research is to allow us to have time to develop our model fully and to get this basic science model of uh, depression-like behavior established in our laboratory and validated. And that was a fundamental part of being able to expand our research and look into these interactions with nicotinic-like medications and uh, for the interaction between uh, gender or sex uh, and, and depression in further studies. We've been able to find that uh, drugs that affect the receptors for nicotine in the brain, so those are the receptors that are stimulated by the nicotine and tobacco smoke, also affect circuits in the brain that are important for mood. And we've now been able to show that agents that change the function of those nicotine receptors could also be used as novel antidepressant medications. We know that there are a large proportion, maybe up to 50% of people with major depressive disorder who are not helped by current medications. And that means that there's a lot of room and a lot of need for new ways to think about depression. And one of the things that the work that we're doing has contributed is a new brain system, the nicotinic system in the brain that normally uses acetylcholine, which is a neurotransmitter we all use, helps us think clearly, it helps us pay attention. But it's also a system that we know now we can change and uh, use nicotine-like medicines to affect depression. The practical value of the research that we've done on the nicotine system and depression is that there are currently medications that have been developed that target these nicotine receptors that are in large clinical trials for depression. We don't know yet whether they're going to be effective. We don't know if in the long term they're going to become uh, good antidepressants, but at least we have the hope that these clinical trials will lead to a new uh, way to treat depression that will help people in particular who are resistant to current medications. And these nicotine-like medications are being added on top of that to see if we can now help people who are resistant to treatment. Mm -hmm.